Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sh Oh, sh You just got me. So remember when he went to see his adopted family? Yes. And they were the white family? And they were holding that black baby? They were up. <laughs> and, and the sister, the, 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 their actual biological daughter, they didn't want mm -hmm. him to do anything to do with her. No. Nope. They kept him away. I think we did something here! <laughs> Call I us, y'all. Call I us. Think, I think we... Because... I think Call we figured us. it out. We're ready. I'm sorry that you um, had to get frightened for the review that we are doing. <laughs> You're not sorry. You're not I'm sorry. not sorry. I'm not nope. sorry. I had a really good time with this one. And I know you did too. <laughs> did you mm -hmm. not? Did you not have a good time? I don't think that's the word that I would use. But, you know, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Before us watching them, the scare mm -hmm. season season two of them, had you recently watched any horror series as of late? No. You know that I don't do horror. I am not a fan of the genre, so I don't really get into it. I think the last quote unquote horror thing that I saw was uh -huh. when we watched Tales from the Hood at Halloween. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well, I'm glad that we could get you back into the uh, the horror and suspense and thriller of it all, mm -hmm. especially in a very black way, right? So mm -hmm. that's what we do here. So if you don't know from watching, uh, or sorry, reading the description, or <laughs> or you don't know what we're talking about yet, we are reviewing. Them season two, the scare, and so uh, let's check out this trailer, and we'll be right back with our discussion on the series. Twenty-five fractures in all. Only bodies I've ever seen this broken were run over by trains. This car's left no eyewitnesses. Who could not be noticed? Do you not understand what went on in here? Did you ever feel like you can't breathe? Your heart is just gonna stop. You wanna yell, but you know no one believes you. It's much too late. It's coming. So that was the trailer for the scare, them season two. Tierra. Yes, T Ron. How did you how did you feel going into this? Tell me. Tell let, tell the people. Because the reason I'm only asking you to kind of give us details is because you don't particularly like, you know horror stuff or anything mm -hmm. but i just want to know how you felt being a non you know horror watcher watching this especially episode one because we kind of we, we start out pretty strong for someone who's queasy <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i of course didn't have any um any <laughs> preconceived notions about it because i didn't watch season one um, mm -hmm. So I didn't really know what to expect. And I was told by you that this was not really going to be scary and not really going to be horror. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. I thought it would be more like a psychological thriller, but no, this is, this is horror horror. I will say to me, the first episode kind of dragged a bit. I don't know if you felt that, but for me, I was like, okay, when we going to get there? So I was kind of feeling that. Um, and I will say, not to spoil it, but like a slight spoiler, the uh, glimpse of the dead oh, no, body. They've had, in they've had a, we, gave them, we gave them time. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll only they've spoil had, a little bit. The glimpse of the dead body, dead bodies in episode one had me like, T-Ron, hold up. You told me this wasn't scary. And that was the moment when I texted you and I was giving you a lot of side eyes. That's how I was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I mm -hmm. mean, to me, to me, for it to be titled The Scare or subtitled The Scare for this uh, season, mm -hmm. I particularly didn't find it to be that scary. Now, seeing seeing the, um, you know, the mangled bodies and things like that, it can be a bit gory. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I I will admit I did I did kind of laugh a little bit at the um positioning of the. <laughs> You would laugh. You have dark humor. You Anytime. would laugh. <laughs> it, it just was. It it's just. It was just like. And then and then that that scene where um, our detective, who is who's our leads, by the way, my my bad. <laughs> all good. All good. We jump right in, but it's all good. All good. All good. So the lead detective is named Don, and that's played by Deborah Ayerinde. Okay, so she is. Um, Episode one, she comes into that scene where you mm-hmm. saw the body that you didn't want to see, and she, and at some point later in the um, series, she tries to like do her detective work. So she sort of recreates that, and she goes and she gets yes. under the sink herself. Mm-hmm. That scene, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, that because my thought was like, okay, I understand you're doing your detective work, but we already know that a body can fit underneath the sink because you found a body <laughs> underneath the sink <laughs> we already know this you're not proving that this is they, no. just, they just wanted to they just really want to drive that home what this <laughs> um this season of them takes advantage of mm. is they freely use the uh audible horror right mm, um okay. you countless bones cracking in this <laughs> Yes. Yes. So if you could run a synopsis and then let's talk about our other lead because I really want to uh, get into that. Well, let's see here. What do we have for the synopsis? The new season of the horror mm, anthology, which is mostly a separate storyline from what audiences saw in the first season, follows Deborah Irende's Dawn, a Los Angeles police uh, detective who gets wrapped up in a gruesome murder case that shakes the whole department to its core okay mm-hmm. and then let's talk about our other lead in here mr uh luke luke james luke James. yeah i was surprised to see him in this sort of a role but he played edmund gaines who is a key character in this series see i thought you were gonna say he's a key key and i would have agreed <laughs> i would have agreed wait what <laughs> There, there's a lot. So let me first start by saying mm. Luke James, he's he's one of those people that just are too talented, right? Yeah. And, and what I mean is that he does everything exceptionally that he does, right? So we know he's, he's an amazing singer. And we know that he's he's been acting for a while and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. But once you sift through all the other stuff, right? You land on something that it's like, oh, you were meant for this. <laughs> this Luke steals the whole series. Let's be and honest. Does. His, yeah. his performance is phenomenal. And it's one of those things where it's like, when you get a role like this as an actor, mm-hmm. you can't pass it up. And you have to do it all the way. And you have to be willing to look as ugly be as goofy and just kind of let it all go. And Luke did all of that here. He did. Um, I don't, I didn't even, I'll be honest. Luke James is one of those people where it's like, I know he's always working. He's always around. I don't keep up with him that much. Right. Because I see, you know, he's been on the shy and he's been on other shows and stuff like this. And so I see him working, but it's kind of like passive a bit to me where it's just like, okay, decent role. Good job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, wasn't wasn't he also in uh, Girls Trip as well? He was in Girls yeah. Trip. He also was in the New Edition um, movie yeah. seri- so slash series. So it's like you know, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. But this mm-hmm. was his role. Mm-hmm. This, ooh, excuse me, this was his moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just want to give him all the things because I think he's gonna get a couple of noms. For this, but I think so, T. And you know, I always tell you, I'm with you when you write, and you write on this one. I like the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, yo, Luke James is carrying this, carrying yeah. this. And I, I'm like, you, like, I know that he's working, I know his name, I know his face, I know he also does music. 
Um, but I don't really know of any standout roles that he's done. There's nothing that I could just be like, oh yeah, he did that. You know, this yeah, now I do. This is yeah, you do. the one. This is the one. Yeah. And I, I was watching it and I was like, he's so good at this. I hope he did therapy to release this character <laughs> after filming because it was so it, deep. It gives it gives he was in therapy before doing the character. And this <laughs> is what this came is the out. release. This is the release. <laughs> <laughs> so, but mm. I want to talk to you about these uh, Raggedy Ann dolls. Did you ever own a Raggedy Ann doll? I did. So, of course, the whole time I was watching, I was like, I had a Raggedy Ann. I never had the Andy, but I definitely had the Ann. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. It's so interesting, too, because I know so many, that, that particular doll spanned multiple generations. Yeah. And, um... In the in the series, I think that they kind of take some liberty a little bit uh, with the history of the doll, um, as far as its um, racial aspects and stuff. Yeah. So when with the doll, it, it was introduced in like the early 1900s, right? Here's how the doll ties in, sort of um, symbolically in the story. It has like these sort of racist undertones because they did have like a mammy doll in the lineup at, at one point. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the extent of like the, you know, racial origins or whatever. But okay. the actual characters, Raggedy Ann and, and Andy, were twins, right? Yep. So we learn in the series that Don and what's Luke's character's name again? Edmund. Edmund. Mm -hmm. Edmund are actually twins, mm -hmm. right? Which and was so, strange, a strange it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parallel, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I was going to go for just siblings. Same, <laughs> same, which already would have been a stretch. But when they said twins, I was like, okay, y'all. I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll let it slide. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there was like some parallels in that Um and how their relationship, the dolls' characters' relationship is versus the actual people. But mm -hmm. then there are some plot holes as a result of that because even though we get introduced to the Raggedy Ann dolls and there's these parallels of them being twins and having a similar kind of relationship, um, they kind of don't explain why they ever even introduced it or why the demon that Luke, or not Luke, <sighs> What's Edmund. the character? Edmund ends up, <laughs> um, ends up, you know, giving himself to takes on the form of the Raggedy Ann doll. I did you miss something, or did I miss something? <laughs> With the no, neither one of us missed anything because they didn't really go there. I also was confused by this. I thought that that was gonna get tied in at some point, and it really wasn't. It. I it, didn't understand really, why that was the demon's manifestation. I, mm -mm. It Overall. could have been anything, but it became the Raggedy Andy. And I was like, well, why? why? Why this? I don't know. Yeah, it, I don't know. That, it, that was a little open-ended for me. Um, <laughs> we, we get a story that, again, it's told from multiple parallels. We do learn that they are twins and that they're, they're related based on um, Ruby. Ruby. Ruby was in the first season of them. And she's the daughter, the eldest daughter in the uh, family. And her particular demon in season one is a result of her social uh, environment. She has to go to a mostly uh, majority white school. She wants to fit in. She doesn't feel like she looks like everybody. We see her at one point um, with the white paint on her face, um, with the blue mm -hmm. contacts. Mm. Um, and her demon was manifesting her, itself in the form of a um, little white girl who was being her best friend. And she had to overcome that. And so her dropping off the twins to this uh, lady when they were babies was her running away from that or rather trying to get the kids away from the thing that had still been haunting her from even in the, um, I think it was like set in the 50s or 60s at the time. The 50s. And um, I thought that that was an okay tie-in just to kind of make the universe exist all at once. But 
I thought that it, I thought we were doing an anthology here. I thought we were just getting a whole, a whole new separate story. Mm-hmm. What I, I I say the saving grace for them tying it in was that Dawn looks like her grandmother because she played the mother in the season one. So I guess there's that. <laughs> oh wait, wait, pause. Wait, the character who played Dawn played the yeah, grandmother. De- yeah, Deborah Deborah Ayer Ayer how you say her name? Ayer Ayer Day. Day. She played the mother in season one. So so in essence, she actually played the grandmother of her uh self. Her herself. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. So you know, uh, overall, I was more so blown away by uh, the performances, especially that of Luke James. Yeah. Um, the only thing that would suck about a season three is that he would not be able to come back unless... <laughs> come on. <laughs> unless season three is set in the early 2000s and he's playing his own, um, you know, grandson. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then that means he would have had to have a baby with somebody at some point. So he could have. have to have flashbacks of that. So he could have. He could have. Wait, 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 wait. Oh sh! Oh, shit, you just got me. So remember when he went to see his adopted family? Yes. And they were the white family. And they were holding that black baby. They were up. <laughs> and, and the sister. The, the 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 their actual biological daughter they didn't mm-hmm. want him to anything to do with her. No, nope. they kept him away. I think we did something here. <laughs> Call I us, y'all. We, Call I us. Think, I think we because I think Call we figured us. it out. We're ready. We can write this script. We are ready. Y'all, <laughs> y'all. Le- who's the executive producer? Lena Waith, I think. Lena. Lena, girl. <laughs> Call us. Uh, <laughs> We're available. Any, anybody, any, <laughs> listen, that's how we get him in. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm elated now, based mm-hmm. on that alone. Yes. Oh, I got uh, one more thing for you before we give our ratings. I'm curious to know. Okay. What did you think about Pam Greer's performance as Athena? Let me just. Mm-hmm. Let me just listen. Listen. Pam Greer is in her seventies. Pam Greer is a woman that we do not talk about enough for yeah. being a pioneer in the film industry as she was. Mm-hmm. Sex symbol, leading lady. Mm-hmm. She basically owned the whole black exploitation era. Yep. Segway. Her career span spans multiple decades. And yep. the, the, listen. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, it was it was two two women, Lola Falana and Pam Greer. <laughs> Greer. <laughs> and I I was so honestly, I'll be honest with you. I had seen them season one several years ago, and then finally bringing this out, I was I was like, okay, it's been so long. Like, do I really want to get back into this? When I heard that. Pam Greer was in the cast. Mm. Then I was like, I'm gonna watch it. Uh, that, was, okay. that, that was my selling point, honestly. Okay. And um, she's actually in most of it. I was, yeah. I was, I was gonna hate if she was just like in a cameo or just in a few scenes, or, you know, that kind of thing. Because they do that sometimes. They'll bring in like a legendary uh, name mm-hmm. to a, to a series just for them to be like. Oh, your grandmother's visiting and she just comes and drops off presents. <laughs> yeah, no, she was like in every episode. Mm-hmm. And and she was active. Um, I, I did enjoy it. Her storyline was a bit choppy when it came down to the actual um the actual uh haunting for hers. Yeah. And I think I think the reason I justified it in my mind was that it was more indirect than um Edmonds and um Don's because she wasn't related by blood to them and the, mm. and that demon's goal was to use things around them to draw them together and like you know tell their story. So okay. when it, when it came down to her like she she didn't care for the raggedy Ann dolls and 
Um, she worked at that random toy store. <laughs> she did. <laughs> for 10 um, years. <laughs> for 10 years. And um, also toy stores, right? Mm-hmm. Speaking of toy stores, before yeah. I finish giving Pam Greer her praise, toy stores, the... Um, just seeing the old cars, the the soundtrack of the show. <sighs> you know me. F. You know me. That uh, is what I was tuned uh, in on. I was so uh, happy with the soundtrack. It was it was yeah. perfect. It was perfect. So I so I accepted the Toy Story because we used to have those. We did. You're right. <laughs> no, you're right. We, they used we to be did. lucrative. Yes. 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 So um, having her work at a toy store was was a bit random, but I, again, I let it pass. I'm willing to let anything pass if Pam Greer is doing it. Uh, I, but my favorite thing about Pam Greer mm-hmm. is her ability to build up this legacy in Hollywood, effectively leave Hollywood, get her a ranch in Colorado, and mind her business. Listen. And now she just, she's like I said, she's in her 70s. She's looking amazing. She comes on that, and she's doing what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. I ain't mad at it. I, shout out to Pam Greer. Shout out to Pam and, Greer. Um, yeah. While y'all mm-hmm. lining up all those lifetime achievements and things that y'all do. Hello. She's still <laughs> with us. Hello. She's still with us and yeah. doing her things. I agree. Um, Yep. Pam Greer is one of those people where even if she even if she says she don't want it, let's let's say she's like, oh no, I don't want, to, I don't want to accept that. Send it to her anyway. Send it to her. House. I'm one of those people. I was like, I love you, and I don't care what you do about it. We gonna like, love you anyway. Now what? Just drop it off at her house. You gonna have to, you know. you're gonna have to <laughs> swing on me because I just love you anyway. <laughs> so send it to her yes. doorstep. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Thank thank you thank you Pam. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna give my rating on this. Yeah. Um, I did have a good time overall. I'm not as squeamish as you when it comes to the horror and stuff. And I do know that we kind of have a different threshold for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was able to just watch it for the sake of the performances. And, um, I really wanted to see how they tied in the universe and they did it in a more, um, straightforward way. Um, there are just significant plot holes in the overall, Um, things and mm-hmm. kind of took me out at certain points. I, there were certain moments like, like when um, Edmund is auditioning for a role. It came off very comedic. It was really good. Let me be clear, really good. But it came off comedic, and I don't know if they were ever trying to be that funny throughout the series. But there were some really funny Wait, moments. Wait, which in- part? Edmund goes to do an audition, and he's uh-huh. that's when the camera guy's laughing at him. That's why. Oh, okay, like in the him. beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's and he's you know doing his lines. He's supposed to be a a street you know a thug. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but and it was giving. It was not giving. It was, mm-hmm. it was not. But um, moments like that, I really, I really laughed. I really open mouth like ha ha. And I don't know if they intended that. Maybe okay. in that particular scene, yes, a little chuckle. But there were multiple things just with his character that I kind of found humorous. Okay. Um, and then you speak of, when you spoke of Tales of, from the Hood earlier, mm-hmm. that the part where we see um, Don confronting Edmund as a demon and um, giving him his peace, if you will, and his arm starts snapping back. I did think of David Allen Greer's arms snapping back into ah, the world. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> um, there, were, there were just a lot of callbacks to things that I think were subtle, that were good. And as a 90s baby, I appreciate that. Uh, and the final um, scene where Don, you know, shares a recording with the police force and she gets exonerated from the charges and things like that. I don't know if you noticed, but her attire was very much justice, from poetic justice. Mm, yes, I caught that. Yes. So, you yep. know, there's this little stuff like that that I appreciated, yep, but had nothing great. to do with the overall story. I am going yeah. to have to give this a Queen Latifah. Um, it was almost okay. it was almost more just because the way Luke Carey, if I was just judging 
and and you know giving ratings to individual people in the series, Luke would get an Angela Bassett. All listen, you hear me? But, <laughs> but the series overall, the execution was well. The soundtrack was great. The callbacks were awesome. Um, the storytelling was good, and the tie-in to um, the overall them universe, I was okay with. There were things I could appreciate, but I'm giving it a Queen Latifah only because of the um, plot holes and questions that I still have. What about you? Okay. All right. I feel like that's a fair assessment. Um, as for me, as you know, horror is not my genre, but I will say I didn't feel like this was quote unquote scary. I just, mm -hmm. it was dark. I don't like dark stuff <laughs> for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it gave that. Um, so I, I try to put that aside and I'm trying to be mm -hmm. fair here. So as you mentioned, the performances, I felt like the performances here, no misses. Everybody hit. Everybody came to do what they came to do and they did it. So I appreciated that. Um, I Like I said, Luke James, if we were just rating him, <laughs> Angela Bassett all day, okay? He did the things. So shout out to Luke James. Pam Gear, happy to see her. And then I think the kids that were featured in this were actually, they, they did, you know, a great job as well. So I appreciated all of the performances. No issues with that. Um, I will say there were some holes in the plot line for me. We spoke about a couple of those um, already, so I won't go back into that. But um, I will say there was a lot of trauma in this. And yes, I realize <laughs> it's a horror um, anthology series, but there was it's so literally much. literally based on trauma. <laughs> it's literally every Black trauma that they can think of, they threw it in here. Here's my list. Racism, <laughs> police brutality, Rodney King, murder, sexism, mental illness, harassment, family trauma. Like it was just so much. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I can't. Which way you want me to go with this? Like, do you want me to go here? You're yeah. like, oh, now we're back over here. It was just so much trauma and so many tropes. Like, yes, I realized that they were trying to remind us of the times, but they kept doing that. They kept beating us over the head with it. And I didn't feel like that was necessary. You mentioned the soundtrack. I felt like the soundtrack was phenomenal. And that did a good job of reminding us of the times. Um, I think they did a good job with like, uh, wardrobe because I'll be paying attention to stuff like that like hold on girls didn't dress like that in the 90s no the way they had Don dressing was absolutely hell they dressed in the 90s I think also um, Edmund's character was very early 90s so I appreciated that so I was looking at things like that um, as I was watching this but overall for a person who doesn't really get into this type of stuff I enjoyed it I will say I did not hate it so I am going to go ahead and give it a Jennifer Lewis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a proud Jennifer Lewis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm -hmm. well. <laughs> you do me don't you do me some of these ratings you give child i'll be like dang yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> well if you've been watching this far um if you're watching on youtube you can go ahead and leave a uh comment subscribe let us know what you thought i think me and tiara cracked the code with this one with that uh with the baby and being with the white family, I yes. think that they tried to mislead us and mm -hmm. have us believe that the white family just adopted another, another. black family. Mm -hmm. But I think we figured out the roots of season three. That being said, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can leave a comment and let us know what you thought. Like, share, all of the things. If you are listening to this as an audio medium, be sure to leave us five stars. If it's less than five stars, don't even leave it. Close it. You already listened. Go and listen to some more. <laughs> and then rate that five stars. And, Amen. and rate that five stars too. <laughs> <laughs> I am T-Ron. You can find me on social media, on Instagram at t -Ron World, on TikTok for a moment at T-Ron with two underscore. <laughs> 
Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't ready. You can also find Ubiquitous Blacks all over oh. social media at Ubiquitous Blacks. You can email us recommendations or send us a uh, comment, DM us, et cetera, et cetera. Ubiquitousblacks at gmail.com if you don't have it. Tiara, where can they find you? Yes, you guys can find me over on my YouTube channel. It is at Tierra Takes. I'm over there doing travel content. So please come over and stop by and say hello. But if you just want to reach out to me directly, go ahead and hit me up on my website. It is tierratakes.com. Or if you just want to do it through the Ubiquitous Blacks channels, that works as well. I will get the message. And they can follow you on Instagram. Yes, also Instagram at Tierra Takes on Instagram. But, you know, come see me on YouTube first. Do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. <laughs> Website, YouTube, socials, all of mm-hmm. it. All the things. All of mm-hmm. it. All that. All <laughs> that. <laughs> well, until then, for our next scary movie. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Calm down. Gosh. We'll Can we wait till play. Halloween, please? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we'll watch something much lighter next time. I can't wait. Okay. So yes. until then, and next Tuesday, we will see you all soon. Peace out. Bye, y'all.